piece of music, a, a popular music that I really recall, was my mom brought home um, Herbie Mann doing "Coming Home Baby," which was from a when I, from a very popular record he had. So I remember that, but that you know it didn't really. I wasn't really deep into music until later on with the folky period. And then I discovered that in New York they had um, WJRZ. Uh, was Jerry White maybe was the DJ? Was that the right name? And he, you know, he used to he used to play all the folk music, all the early stuff. And I really, you know, I really got into Joni Mitchell and. Um, and then Dylan, of course, and Dylan was probably more of an influence on me prior to the rock stuff, the folky stuff, you know. And I remember the, I remember the, and, you know, and then in the background there was always the Supremes and all this other stuff was going on. And I was like a little too young to get into Elvis, so I never really paid much attention to Elvis. And you know, I, I went to some jazz shows. I, I saw, you know, I saw, I saw guys. Fuck. Uh, Stan Getz at the Cafe of Go Go. My friend and me used to go see all that kind of shit sometimes, you know. And um, and I remember the Beatles showed up, and I I was kind of had a kind of Justin Bieber reaction to it, like oh it's Teeny Bopper at first. But then when I got the record, I bought and bought the record, and I, I, that was it. You know, I was totally hooked on the record. And shortly thereafter, we started discovering the Rolling Stones. And you know, over all the years, the Stones have have are more listenable to me now than, than the Beatles stuff. Maybe the Beatles stuff has been beaten to death by the the world and me hearing it for fifty years, you know, and in elevators and all that shit, you know. So the, the Stones music kind of holds up for me. In, 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 and the Stones, the first two Stones albums, I always cite as a example of punk music when people say what is punk rock is the first two stones out our, our punk music you know except it's blues you know it's just not you know, something else i remember buying the first beatles album on coney allen avenue in a in a hobby store that sold records I also i also used to listen to a lot of soundtracks too i was a real movie soundtrack buff, buff even before that like i loved the i loved the lawrence of arabia soundtrack and there's a uh, Shirley MacLaine movie called Irma La Deuce. I really love the soundtrack to that. I used to play that all the time. So, uh, so I, you know, and, and her, you know, Peter Gunn and all the Mancini stuff. I, I, I kind of grew up with that stuff too, even before I was listening to rock music too. The rock scene was heavily entrenched in the West Village when I was coming up. You know, in sixty four, five, six, all the way back then, everybody used to go to the West Village and hang out. And, Love and Spoonful was there, and I was that was you know, and then I you know I, I had that experience where I opened up for the Velvet Underground. Where I had a, I had a really close friend I grew up with who was um, got a job working for the factory for Andy, and he was the gopher at the factory, and he would go to Andy's house when he lived with his mother, and wake him up in the morning and you know do odds and ends. He was you know little kid, probably like sixteen, and he had waist length blonde hair, which was he was really cute, so it was unusual at the time. And we were all we were all playing all the time by then, and at some point he just came to my house. We all used to congregate at my house in Brooklyn, and he said, "You know, the Velvets are playing at this place uptown, and the opening band isn't going to show up. So you guys want to do it?" So we all got on the subway with our gear and we went, and we got to open up for the Velvet Underground. And they, Marine Tucker, let us put her drums upright, you know, so the bass drum would be upright, and we used their amps and stuff. And it was kind of was nobody there. And Andy was off in the shadows. It was you know, maybe 20 people there. It was a great thing, though. It's part of my musical history. I was hanging out with Met Debbie in '73 at the first show of the Stilettos at, this, at a bar on 24th Street, which was downstairs from a loft that Elda, one of the other girls in the Stilettos, shared with Holly Woodlawn. And I went to the front. I thought Debbie was really amazing and gorgeous and. So I, uh, you know, I became the first permanent musician. They had like transient musicians. They used to switch off all the time. And we used, we, we started playing around with the stilettos and we played like the 82 Club. There's no, nobody knows about the damn 82 Club. It was such a great thing. This was this, was this old 
uh, drag bar that was downstairs on one second, third street, wherever the heck it was. It was number 82, whatever street it was on. And it, that went back to the 40s and 50s. There was a, they had a picture in the back of Abbott and Costello with drag queens, you know, which was amazing. I wish I had stolen it off the wall, you know. And they had a, went back, had a strange sort of mafia history. All the, I can see all those. It's like the scenes in performance with all the fucking guys sitting around watching the transvestites. Kind of. But, uh, so, you know, we were doing a circuit around New York, and I remember at some point, and I, I, I went into, I, you know, and I, I was very close with Eric Emerson, who was uh, one of the Warhol guys, one of the superstars. I, I, I you know, I went to, so I saw the, finally went and saw the dolls, and Eric was opening up for them, and I really liked his band, I got close to him, and he became my roommate for a while. And, um, we were, you know, we were just doing the scene, and I remember, and, and I, I had gone into CB's, right, I had gone into CB's at one point, way before, and Eric, coincidentally, was playing there before I met him, and that must have been in 72, probably, it was before I met Debbie. It probably must have been in, 70, in the summer of 72. I just, you know, stumbled in there, because I was living on First and First, which was nearby. So at one point, Elda shows up and she says, we're at Max's, I remember we were in Max's, and she says, I saw this band downtown in this weird bar and they dress like old men. And that was television she was referring to. So we went down there and saw what was going on and started playing there. And at some point, I knew, and I, I knew Tommy Ramon from Mercer Art Center where we used to play occasionally too. And he had a band called Butch, and there at Mercer, and he came and he said, "Listen, we have this band called the Ramones. You know, I heard you guys found a place to play downtown. So I don't know if I was the first connection to the Ramones and CBGBs, but yeah, somewhere in there, you know, there's probably other connections too. That was it, and the rest is history."